Hey, I'm Michael from the Mr. Crafty Pants YouTube channel and MrCraftyPants.com where I show you tips, tricks, and tutorials on how to use and master your Cricut cutting machine. And this is October. Now y'all, I have been doing a little miniature series during October where every single Tuesday, I have brought you all a new video where I am transforming my parents' front porch for Halloween, mainly with the help of products from ShopAuntyTay.com as well as her SVG membership, her Craft Day Creator membership. And y'all, this membership is mind-blowingly good. I love it. Literally starting at only eight bucks a month, you get access to thousands of SVG files, a lot of those being Disney-inspired SVG files, as well as hundreds of fonts. And I mean, starting out at only eight bucks a month, I mean, that's an amazing deal. Now, as for today's project, you all, I am so flippin' excited because I'm showing you all how to apply HTV, AKA heat transfer vinyl, to wood to make a super cute Halloween sign. And I, I love this. I actually created the SVG file that we're using for this project myself. And it is included in the Auntie Tay Craft Day Creator membership. So again, definitely something you all want to check out. On top of that, I'm actually adding a little bit of dazzle to that sign with Auntie Tay's bling. Y'all, this bling is so good. I'm obsessed. Just wait till you see it if you have not yet seen it. It's so, so, so good. Y'all, I am just all the way around so excited for today's project. So let's get crafty. So to customize our sign today, I am applying HTV to this sign right here. Now I got this from Michaels and whenever I bought it, the entire sign was all brown. It was all this color right here. And I obviously painted the center of it, but I painted it with the chalked up paint from shopauntytay.com in the color Brie. Now, as far as the HTV that I'm applying to it, I am using Caesar Easy Weed HTV in the colors black and Vegas gold, which I have to say that I I think that out of all of the Caesar Easy Weed colors, I think Vegas Gold is probably one of my favorites. I love it. But other than those two things, uh, the other materials or tools that we'll need is obviously a Cricut cutting machine. I'm using my Cricut Maker, but you could also use a Cricut Explorer or even a Cricut Joy, uh, whatever's gonna work for you. The only thing with the Cricut Joy is the size limitation, like the max width is four and a half inches. However, you can get around that with actually slicing your design and making multiple cuts and piecing them together. Kinda, sorta, like I'm doing today. You're also gonna need a heat source. I highly, highly recommend a Cricut Easy Press or an actual heat press. You can use a household iron. However, they're just way more unpredictable. There's a whole lot more of a guessing game that goes into that than with just like an actual heat press or easy press because with those two items, with the easy press and the heat press, you know that your heating plate is gonna heat up super evenly. And not only that, but you know that it's gonna to get to the exact temperature that you set it to. And you also have a built-in timer as well. You're also gonna need a cover sheet. I typically use a Teflon sheet. I just personally feel like the, the heat distribution is so, so, so much better with a Teflon sheet versus like parchment paper. Although if all you have is parchment paper, then it will definitely work as well. And last but not least, we are obviously gonna need a design to make all this magic happen, right? And I actually designed this design from scratch. And it's actually a part of the Craft Day Creators membership on auntytay.com. So I'm gonna head over there right now and we'll download it. The first thing I wanna do is come over here and take a look at this membership page because y'all, this is way too good to pass up. Her Craft Day Creator membership is so flipping amazing. Like hopefully you can see what everybody is absolutely raving about with this membership. So literally for like eight bucks a month, you can become a Craft Day Creator member. And with that, you get access to thousands of SVG files, hundreds of fonts, new bundles are released every single week. Uh, there's tons of Disney inspired bundles like they're so good. Like y'all know, I love my Disney <laughs> and the files on here are amazing. Not only that, but you also get access to her planner club, which I mean, come on, New Year's is coming around quick. Everybody loves to get organized for the new year. And I mean, rightfully so. Well, with this, you get access to over a thousand dollars worth of planner printables from her partners. 
I mean, that's so good, you guys. Not only that, but you also get 20% off of shopontite.com all the time, regardless. You get like a special little discount code for that specifically. Now also on this page, if you'll notice, is this commercial use license membership right over here. I mean, this is $13 a month. And with this, you get basically commercial rights to all of the digital files. Well all the applicable digital files. Everything that's labeled personal use only is obviously not covered by this commercial use license, but you get access to this, plus literally everything that's over here in the craft day creators column. So all of this, plus you can actually create products with her SVG files or with her applicable SVG files anyway, and you can sell those and make a profit. And I mean, for 13 bucks a month, that's a remarkably great deal. Now, if you wanna even like step it up and really level up your game and become a business member, I mean, 25 bucks a month is crazy good as well. You get literally access to everything on this page. You also get access to her seven step business guide, access to Universite where she releases a brand new course every single month. You get brand new business printables every single week. Like I said earlier, you get commercial usage rights to her SVGs and designs, 20% off of shopontite.com. You get discounts to her business partners, business videos also from her as well. Like there are so many great things, especially this access to the weekly Zoom meetings with her. I mean, come on, like this is so amazing you all. Like I'm so excited for all of this and I mean, at these prices, she really makes these prices to where almost anybody can afford them, which I absolutely love. All right, so back to our project. <laughs> I just had to make sure that you all knew about this amazing membership. But back to our project, I'm gonna come up here and hover right over SVGs, and I'm gonna scroll down here to the bottom where it says Holiday SVGs. And on this page, if you'll notice, there are a bunch of different icons, basically a different icon for every single holiday, right? Now, obviously I'm gonna select the Halloween icon because well, this is a Halloween themed episode. <laughs> and I'm gonna come right down here to the very bottom of this page. But let me just again, highlight this because if you all need a last minute Halloween costume, I mean, come on. These are adorable. Look at the crowns, like how cute are these? I mean. Not only that, but the seven dwarfs, you get access to like the Taco Bell sauces. <laughs> I mean, they're so adorable. Like I love these so, so much. And let me tell you, I am still just absolutely determined to find something to put this SVG file on right here. The I put a spell on you. I'm obsessed with that. All right, so all the way down here at the very bottom, you can see that this was designed by me, Mr. Crafty Pants. And this is the SVG file right here that we are using for today's project. Now, check this out, y'all, because I am obsessed with this. Literally, everything on her site now is a one-click download. All I have to do is select that. And since I am using the Chrome browser, it did download right down here towards the bottom left-hand corner of the page. If you're not using the Chrome browser, then that's gonna end up wherever your downloads folder is. But right now it is a zip file, but we obviously need to unzip that zip file before we can upload it into Cricut Design Space. And we'll do that by just selecting that and it is unzipped and ready for us to upload into Cricut Design Space. So let's hop over right now to Cricut Design Space and I'll show you how to get those uploaded. All right, so now we're on the Cricut Design Space Canvas, and I wanna come over here to the left-hand side of the page and click on Upload. And I'm gonna click on Upload Image, and I'm gonna click on Browse. All right, so there is our image that is now on our canvas. So now I'm actually gonna grab our sign, take down the measurements. That way I can make a super accurate template in Cricut Design Space so that I can accurately resize our image to fit perfectly onto our sign. All right, so I'm just grabbing a tape measure. And let's get the height first. All right, so the height is 25 and a half inches and the width is, the width is 15 and three eighths of an inch. So I'm gonna plug those numbers into Cricut Design Space in the form of a template and we'll go from there. All right, so to create our template, I'm coming over here to the left-hand side of the page and clicking on shapes and I wanna open up a square. There we go. All right, so the first thing that I wanna do with this square or with this template is to change the color of it to match the color of our surface or the main color of our surface rather. And this has zero effect whatsoever on your finished project. It really doesn't amount to a hill of beans other than the fact that it, at least it helps me visualize the end project just a little bit better. Now, if you don't wanna go through the process of actually changing this out, by all means, you do not have to whatsoever, but I really feel like it helps me. 
And I've also heard from a lot of you all as well that it helps you as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and come up here towards the top left hand corner. Click on this little color swatch and then change this to white. There we go. All right, so next up we need to change the size, don't we? So to change the size, I'm coming up here towards the top of the canvas where it says size. And I'm gonna actually change the width. I'm gonna change it to 15 and 3 eighths of an inch. But in decimal form, that would be 15.375. And no, I do not know that off the top of my head. I had to Google it. <laughs> All right, so as you can see, putting in that measurement for the width automatically made the height the same exact measurement. And that's because we had that padlock locked. Now, if we came over here and clicked that padlock, we will then be able to um, have a different measurement for the width versus the height, which is exactly what we're wanting. So I'm gonna unlock that padlock. And for that height, I'm gonna put in here 25.5 for 25 and a half inches. And then just hit enter. And now all I need to do is come over here and lock that padlock back just by clicking on it. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and right click this template and then come down here and select send to back. There we go. All right, so now all I need to do is take our image, drag that right on top of this template and then click this little resize handle right here at the bottom right hand corner and then just drag that outwards. All right, so I think that that's looking pretty good. Now, if you want to take it even one step further in the whole visualization process, you could come back over here and open up another shape, open up another square. We could change the color of this to brown by coming up here towards the top left-hand corner and then selecting brown. And then we can just go ahead and click the little padlock right here at the bottom left-hand corner of the square. And now, as you can see, we have this little handle right here that allows us to really make this into any kind of shape. So I'm actually going to right click this and then select send it back. And just like this, we kind of have the illusion of the entire sign that we're applying this to. Kind of like this right here. <laughs> Again, all of this does not amount to a hill of beans. You do not have to do this, but if it helps you visualize it just a little bit better and get a better idea of what it's going to look like on your end project, then it may be worth it to you. All right, so I'm going to click back on our image and I may actually shrink this down just a hair. All right, so I'm really, really liking how that's looking. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and take our image, drag that off to the side, click and drag over our template, and then come up here towards the top left-hand corner of our, of our template. Click this red X and there we go. All right, so let's take a look at the measurements for our image that we just resized. It looks like we are at 14 and a half inches or just a little over 14 and a half inches wide. And the height is 22.598 inches tall. The maximum cutting size for a mat like this is 11 and a half inches by 11 and a half inches. So yes, it is a 12 inch by 12 inch cutting mat, but the maximum cutting size on this 12 inch by 12 inch cutting mat is 11 and a half inches by 11 and a half inches. Now, if you had one of the larger mats, the maximum cutting size on that is 11 and a half inches by 23 and a half inches. However, a lot of people don't have that cutting mat and I really don't wanna just kind of throw you out there on your own. So I'm actually gonna show you how to take an image this, this size, this large, and actually be able to cut it up and then cut it out onto multiple mats this size right here. And don't worry, you don't actually need multiple mats. You could use the same exact cutting mat over and over and over and over. All right, so to do that, I'm actually gonna come back over here to the left-hand side of the page and click on shapes yet again and open up another square. There we go. So this square is going to represent this cutting mat, all right? So I want you to imagine this square being this cutting mat, except for instead of resizing this to be 12 inches by 12 inches, there's really no sense in that <laughs> because the maximum cutting size on that mat is 11 and a half inches by 11 and a half inches. I'm actually, first of all, gonna change this to be the color green just to help you all picture it just a little bit easier. And I'm coming up here towards the top left-hand corner, clicking on this little color swatch and then just changing this to green. All right, now for the size, I'm gonna come up here to where it says size and type in here 11.5, hit enter. And because that padlock is locked, it went ahead and changed the height to be 11 and a half inches as well. Actually, let me right click this little template and then select send it back. All right, so obviously as we can see that this image is not gonna fit onto just one single mat. It's not even gonna fit onto two single mats because as we can see over here on the sides, it's hanging off the sides. All right, so it looks like we're gonna need four mats. So let me go ahead and right click this and then select duplicate. And I'm actually gonna come down here towards the bottom left hand corner and then just zoom in by clicking that little plus sign because I wanna make sure that these two mats are as close together as possible. 
There we go. So I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. All right, so now I'm actually gonna click and drag over both of these mats or both of these templates, right click again, and then select to duplicate. And I wanna line those up directly underneath of those two other mats. All right, so as you can see, I wasn't quite able to get it to match up or to go flush up against those two other squares. So I'm just clicking those again, moving them a little bit closer. All right, so I think that looks pretty good. So let me go ahead and right click our image and then select to send a front. And as we can see here, this image is gonna fit onto four cutting mats. But what I personally like to do is, if you can see this little white cross or white plus sign in the middle of our image, I like to align that up right here, smack dab to where those four mats or those four templates meet. And basically all that does is it makes sure that this image is gonna be cut evenly into four even equal parts. So I'm gonna take this and then just drag it right over top of all four of those lines like so. There we go. All right, so I'm gonna zoom back out a little bit. All right, so if we'll take a look over here on the right-hand side of the page in the layers panel, there are multiple layers inside of our SVG file. Now we obviously have this layer right here, which is just the solid black layer. If I click hide, you'll see everything disappear except for the gold layers, okay? So let me go ahead and unhide that by clicking that little eyeball back. And basically everything else is just these little flourishes or accents or just like basically just design details, right? Now, those bits and pieces, they don't really matter at all if they're sliced or not, or if they're uh, where they're gonna end up, basically. What we need to actually worry about slicing is our black image right here. I'm actually gonna come over here and select that layer, and then I'm gonna come over here and select one of these squares. In this case, I'm actually gonna start at the top left-hand corner. So I'm gonna hold down the Shift key and select that square, and then I'm gonna come down here towards the bottom right-hand corner and select Slice. Now, what I hear a lot is people saying, well, it didn't work for me, the slice is not available, the slice tool is completely grayed out. And if it's grayed out, nine times out of 10, it's because you either have more than two layers selected or you only have one layer selected. You have to have simply two layers selected and that's it. So some people get confused and they think that a layer is just an SVG file and that's not necessarily the case 100% of the time. It is true that sometimes an SVG file can be one single layer, but more often than not, an SVG file has multiple layers in it. So I'm actually gonna come over here, select our original file right here, as you can see. If we zoom in on that, we can see that it is literally our file. <laughs> but it's missing one corner of it, which is exactly what we're wanting. So I'm gonna select that again, hold down the shift key, and this time I'm gonna select our second square, which is at the top right-hand corner. And now I'm gonna come down here towards the bottom right-hand corner again and select to slice. All right, so again, I'm gonna come over here to the layers panel. I am going to find our image right here. And then I'm gonna hold down my shift key and get this square right here at the bottom left-hand corner. And now I'm gonna come down here towards the bottom right-hand corner and select to slice. And here is the last little piece to our puzzle, basically. I'm gonna select that, and then holding down my shift key, I'm gonna select this green square right here at the bottom right-hand corner. And then come down here towards the bottom right-hand corner again and select slice. All right, so let me actually zoom out a little bit just so we can see things a little bit more clearly. I'm gonna click on these green squares and just really just drag them out of the way. And then I'm actually gonna take all of our little bits and pieces from everything move all that out of the way. Everything that's green is just basically a byproduct or basically remnants from where we sliced things through. And we're gonna move that all into one pile and then we'll get rid of it all in just one sweep basically. All right, so there's everything that's just a remnant from where we sliced it all. I'm gonna click and drag over all of this and then click this red X right here at the top left-hand corner. All right, so here is our image all sliced exactly the way that it needs to be so that we can cut it out onto four of these cutting mats or rather the same cutting mat four times. <laughs> all right, so now that that's all done, all I need to do is come up here towards the top right hand corner and select make it. And since we are doing HTV, we do need to make sure that we go through here and mirror everything. So this first layer, I'm gonna click on mirror. And there we go. So now I'm just gonna come down here towards the bottom right-hand corner and select continue. And for our base material settings, I'm gonna go ahead and select everyday iron on. And if you don't see the screen and you're using a Cricut Explorer, just turn your dial over to custom and then that should pop up for you. All right, so my Cricut's basically ready to get started cutting. So I'm gonna go ahead and load my mats and we'll go from there.
All right, so before I apply my Easy Press to my wood sign to apply this first layer of HTV, I'm actually going to cover my HTV with a, a cover sheet, aka a Teflon sheet. And I find that the Teflon sheet really helps to disperse the heat much more evenly than what like a parchment paper would do. So that's why I always prefer using a Teflon sheet over parchment paper. Now, normally whenever you're applying Caesar Easy Weed HTV to fabric or material, you would normally set your heat press or easy press to 305 degrees for about 10 to 15 seconds. However, we are not applying this to material. Instead, we are applying this to wood that has been painted with chalk paint. So to get this to adhere the way that I wanted it to adhere, what I actually did was up the temperature to around 315 degrees, and then I applied each section for about 15 seconds, and that seemed to do the trick for me. Now you may notice these little hair thin lines that separates the four pieces of HTV. And that's really just from the HTV shrinking up just a little bit once the heat is applied to it. So it's almost impossible to get all four of these pieces to match up perfectly once you apply the heat. However, I did go in here with just a little bit of matte black acrylic paint and honestly, it matched it up perfectly and I would have never known that there was any kind of separation whatsoever once looking at it. Now, just to finish this entire sign off and add a completely different level of dimension and fun to it, I did go in here with Auntie Tay's Bling in the shades Spots and Dark Heart for the black, as well as Floating Lanterns for the gold. And y'all, I am obsessed with how this turned out. It's just so much fun. And I just, I'm so glad I decided to do that. Thank you so much for watching this takeover. Do not forget to stamp that like button as well as drop a comment down in the comment section below, just letting us know what you thought of today's project. Also, while you're at it, if you have not yet subscribed to Auntie Tay's channel, now's the perfect time to do so. You do not want to miss out on another episode of October. Now, if you are wanting to learn how to use or master your Cricut cutting machine, you may want to head over to my channel and subscribe there as well. Just search on YouTube for Mr. Crafty Pants Cricut Tutorials, or I'm sure there's probably a subscription link down in that description box below. Thank you again. I'm just so, so, so appreciative of you for watching. And until next time, stay crafty.